Hi, and welcome to our module on quantum internet. We're going to begin gently with a simple module overview. Quantum internet is coming, and it's coming fast, so let's get ready for it. But what does quantum internet mean? You must have heard about many amazing breakthroughs in quantum computing, some of the quantum computers are even available to public. And now people are starting to think, well, what can we do with distributed quantum computers? And that's where quantum internet comes in. Quantum internet is all about linking quantum devices, not only quantum computers, as we will see in our module. So the entanglement states are very important, both for quantum computing as well as quantum communications protocol. And amazingly, they are slowly leaving their comfortable laboratory homes. We have been able to generate some simple as well as complex entangled states under laboratory conditions. But it's a completely different story when we try to do it outside in the real world, under real world conditions. We're going to show you the demonstrations of distributed entanglement states uh, over more than 1,000 kilometers have been actually performed with satellites. Also, we will talk about distribution of multipartite states. And people are now seriously thinking about building testbeds for quantum repeater networks. So the hardware is at a point where it seems feasible and reachable within the next couple of years to build real small quantum networks where we can test this hardware. But hardware is only half the story, even though it's very important. One of the main messages that we're trying to get across in this module is that software is equally as important as hardware. So are there any prerequisites for our course? There are, but they're quite mild. So we recommend, in order to get most out of this course, that you go over our module on overview on quantum communications. Particularly that you're familiar with the notions of tensor products, density matrices, and some simple probability theory. Also, it will be very useful if you go over our module on from classical light to quantum light. Particularly about detection of single photons and hongu mandel interference, which are very crucial when we talk about link architectures, and also some of the hardware that goes into quantum networks and the quantum internet. Also very helpful is to be familiar with some basics on networking, such as protocol stacks, Dijkstra's algorithm, and spanning trees. Now, let's have a quick view of what's going to come in this module. We're going to start with describing the various errors that can occur in quantum networks, and we're going to be interested how to deal with them. The first lesson will be on the three generations of quantum repeaters. Then we're going to look at how we can detect errors with using entanglement purification. And we're going to conclude this block of three lessons with looking at how quantum error correction can not only detect, but also correct these errors. Then we're going to talk about hardware. What's the difference between flying qubits and stationary qubits, and how do they fit into the whole picture of quantum networks? Then we will start to think about how can we establish bell pairs between neighboring nodes of a network? How can we establish link level entanglement? You will see that there's actually various ways how we can do it, and we will introduce these ways in our link architectures lesson. And we will conclude this block of lessons by thinking about various types of quantum network nodes. Then we're going to move on to networks. There will be four lessons, and in the first one, we will look at the various types of networks, from the very small to global and very big networks. In the second lesson in this block, we will think about connection protocols. How do we connect different nodes in the network? What needs to happen in order for them to share end-to-end -end bell pairs and become entangled? Then we will move on to how can we find our way through a network? How can we route information? And also how can multiple users make uh, use of the network resources that it offers. We will talk about multiplexing. And finally, we will bring everything uh, together in the last lesson of this block when we talk about quantum recursive network architecture. Then we will move on to applications. Applications are all about consuming the distributed entanglement that the quantum network is providing. And we will begin by thinking about security and sensing. Then we will move on to the quantum cloud, and we will conclude this block of lessons with one um, nice application called blind quantum computation. 
finally, in the last two lessons of this module, we will go over some very important experimental steps that have been demonstrated either in the lab or outside in the real world and talk about quantum networking efforts here in Japan and the Quantum Internet Task Force. Now, before we begin, there's a little disclaimer. We will be covering a vast number of topics, from classical networking to quantum protocols. And some of these topics are standard textbook material, but on the other hand, some of the topics are cutting-edge research. So we will be referring to a lot of scientific papers. We are not including specific references in the slides, but they will be included in some YouTube video descriptions, as well as the online course system. So, let's begin. <laughs> 